In January 1986. How old were you? I was born in December of that same year. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, my father, he said, we must name our child after this hero. Mm. But my mother said, but that you already name might give our boy trouble in future. Let's, let's, okay, give him the English version. So they struck a compromise. Mm. And uh, so I get to be called Joel. Mm. So I was named after a man I am fighting so hard to throw out. <laughs> <laughs> Today in Parliament, we are discussing the Minister of Education. The last time she was seen was on the day she was being vetted by Parliament. And they said she can't come because there are, there are COVID issues. For her to come to Parliament, all MPs will be checked. Uh, the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs yes. gave an interview to NTV and said, uh, people who go hungry are idiots. Maybe, maybe he used a thick brush to paint. It is not the economy that took Museven to Ruero. Museven went to fight in Ruero because primarily elections had been cheated. This NRA is supposed to be illegal. The 1995 constitution created UPDF. The idea was that the country must migrate from gorillas of Ruero create national institutions, and the pride should be national institutions, not in a, a military outfit that went and shot and killed a half a million people and captured power. That's why those who made the constitution said, please, thank you very much, but we need to move from this point okay. to this. You, you can meet people who you think are sensible. They are saying, now stand by a generator. They think that it is a right. Ufono Pon was speaking about his father, who was a chief over small things that his father thought, thought that it was a right to receive uh, tomato and, and cassava. I, I, I can put up with your father who was getting free chicken. These guys are stealing land. They are stealing government factories. They are stealing uh, stock farms. At least I would put up with your father of chicken and tomato. You can't plead for this of Pondo. People who think that now my son, just because he's my son, he must have a comb. That I said, really? Seven son has a convoy, including a toilet at his age. At least his father is old. But they think is they it, own. Does he, have, does he have the convoy because he's Museveni's son or because he's a general in the military? Is he the only general you know? And the other generals with the convoys? You mean, you mean, is, is, is he the only general with a convoy? He's the only one I know. Tell me another one who has a convoy. To dismantle, to be able to overwhelm the NRM system. They have just divided the DP. They have just right now in the process of dividing FDC very, very seriously, using money as, as well. And even in no pass, I talk, the process is on. So help me God. Some of the NRM strategists believe they have ridden on the opposition party's weakness of only preaching the rhetoric like Museveni Agende, literally meaning Museveni should go. Did they have an ideology in the first place? Because if you look at the Catch words they have been using in the campaigns. Agende, Senyondo, Kotapini, Engule. People are looking for personal aggrandizement. They are looking for personal prosperity. But they are not looking for the prosperity of the people of Uganda. That is the major difference. And that's where NRM beats them all. Museveni outshining mostly political parties formed after 1986 is not a surprise to veteran politician Captain Francis Babu and political scholar Reverend Dr. Simon Feta. We had different little groups. These were pressure groups. These pressure groups formed into eventually parties. So again, uh, it, it, they thought that it is the norm. If you want to remove the man in power, you've got to use that method of resistance or defiance or whatever you, might, you want to describe it. So that now, in my opinion, I, I, I actually told somebody one time, that was a style then, it is out of date. We need to find a different approach. The mobilization strategy ought not to be about removing a head of state. It should be about educating the people about how they own the country, how they own themselves, and how they can own the processes that govern them. Captain Francis Babu 
and Reverend Dr. Simon Feta believes these political parties failed due to weak strategies and believes now if they resort to the law to address the enormous dominance and using systems friendly with Ugandans, they may make some gains. And if any political system or party assumes monopoly, it should be redressed through the law. In the current status quo, I think that the law has to be given a wing, maybe six wings to fly, like angels. I think that every political party will form themselves, organize themselves on a particular ideology. We are in a pool of confusion because we have refused as Ugandans to admit there are certain things we have failed to see and we, while we are trying to adopt other people's system, we have left our system uh, asunder. We NBS Frontline. A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Frontline on NBS TV. My name is Charles Mongu Shampagi. Today is a very historic day in uh, the history of Uganda. On the 25th of January 1971, Idi Amin uh, took power in this country. Uh, I, I don't know, our phone will be helping us to do the mathematics how many years ago that was. But um, rumor has it that the National Resistance Army actually took Kampala on the 25th of January, though the declared date was 26th, 26th of January uh, 1986. Uh, how many years from 1971? That's another 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. So a total, yeah, about 52 for Idi Amin and uh, 38 years for the National Resistance Movement and President Yerim Seveni in power. Many people, you, you must have watched the president um, give his own account, do his own stock taking of his 38 years in power, ticking off uh, what his achievements have been over the years, what work remains in progress, but there are also critics who say, well, look back and ask, should we be here or should we have been ahead? And what does 38 years mean? We'll be discussing that and more. But more importantly, how many leaders are able to maintain a near perfect international standing diplomatically after 38 years in power. You can scan across the globe and we'll be looking through that. How has it been able to pull off uh, that uh, relatively um, solid international um, recognition and acceptability uh, over the years? I've been seeing memes on uh, social media, TikTok especially, comparing Ugandan roads with Kenyan roads, comparing Ugandan schools with, uh, uh, with, with Kenyan schools and uh, giving Ugandans a big laugh I mean, it, it's humbling, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's not humbling. It is uh, a, a lot disappointing uh, for some, but uh, we'll evaluate that as well. And uh, let me also say at the beginning that we congratulate uh, PLE pupils who received their results today and those who performed well, and uh, commiserate with those who didn't perform well, but at P7 they still have a chance to make good. Tonight on the front line, let me start from the extreme end, Ambassador Adonia Ayebare. Is Uganda's permanent representative at the United Nations in New York. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you for having me this evening. Thank you. And, and, and you're also elected chairman of uh, Nanaline Technocrats uh, Ambassadors? Which one is that? S senior officials. Senior officials. Chairman of the senior officials of the Nanaline movement. But that ended. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now I'm going to be coordinating the ambassadors okay. of G77 and NAM. G77 and NAM. And those are the conferences that we've been hosting in Kampala over the last few days. Ofono Opondo is a frontliner and executive director at the Uganda Media Center. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, and I come from Rwanda. You come from Rwanda. Yes. Very nice to have you. Okay. We have the leader of opposition in <coughs> parliament, a former spokesperson of the National Unity Platform, yes, member so of parliament. When, when did I cease to be? Hey, you are keeping uh, how many positions? You're a member of parliament, <laughs> spokesperson, and uh, leader of opposition. I, I, I had no idea that was... Uh, <coughs> the Honorable Joel Senyonyi, very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Charles. Uh, good evening to you. I just noticed you have a panel of uh, retired journalists. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> we have a host who is in semi-retirement. 
Because <laughs> all of us have played that thread here. Yes. So anyhow. Well, well it's a pan <laughs> of journalists. It's a pan of journalists <laughs> discussing <laughs> events in the news. And and politicians no, now no, turned politicians, turned like diplomats, <laughs> uh, turned diplomats, and uh, last but not least, uh, making a return. Uh, Honorable Semuju, I really find a lot of difficulty explaining your absences <laughs> because people want to eat me up when you're not on the show. But Honorable Semuju Nganda represents the people of Kira Municipality. He's a member of the Forum for Democratic Change and the Frontline. Very nice to have you. For now. Hmm? For now? Yes. Meaning? For now means for now. You're also in transition. Do you want to no. I have said I am a member of FDC for now. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, they, they used to say that is a very pregnant statement. <laughs> let, 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 let me do a quick run around the panel. Uh, some members of the panel, I think apart from Ofono Pondo and some extent Ambassador Ayevare, uh, the other people seem to be within, uh, no, a little above. Uh, President Yorim Seven is uh, uh, 38 years. Let me start with um, the person I believe should uh, have had almost his entire life under President Yorim <laughs> Seven, the Honorable Joel Senyonyi, <laughs> to ask, uh, what, what do these 38 years mean? And um, let me put a rider. We just imagine out of back-to-back um, -back international, very successful international engagements, which is a mark of confidence in uh, President Yoram Seveni after 38 years in power. You had uh, the conference of uh, speakers and presiding officers of parliament. You had um, the non-aligned movement. <coughs> you had uh, G77 plus China mm -hmm. or the third South Summit, South-South Cooperation. And uh, you had uh, IGAD uh, meeting in Kampala. Uh, that's quite heavy for someone who's been in power for 38 years to happen within a space of a month, or less than a month actually, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Let me commence with something which uh, maybe some people do know, now that you were talking about our age. So, Mr. Seven and his group came into power in January 1986. How old were you? I was born in December of that same year. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, my father wanted me to be called Yoweri. Mm. because there had been an interesting situation. My father had gone somewhere to do a short course, one of those countries. So while there, there was chaos here, so he couldn't return. I was still dating with my mother, called her place of work, this landline phone, and said, you know what, I can't return, it's chaos. Let me work out papers for you to come and join me, wherever he was, I don't know. But as they were still in that mix, Mr. M7 takes over, and there was tranquility. Mm. So he called and said, nah, no need for this paperwork, I'm returning home. So he returns, I don't know, Feb or thereabout, I'm not sure. Then I was born in December. Oh, that year. So, so, so you're a true Museveni <coughs> child. He said, we must name our child after this hero mm. who has uh, made sure our country is tranquil. But my mother said, but that your name might give our boy trouble in future. Let's, let's okay, give him the English version. So they struck a compromise. Mm. And uh, so I get to be called Joel. Mm. So I was named after a man I am fighting so hard to throw out. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'm trying to redeem my name. Anyhow, <laughs> um, away from that history, th 38 years of uh, Mr. Museveni, it's, it's important to look at what he and his team promised as they came through. You know, sometimes they make comparisons and say, we are not as bad as this, we are not as bad as this other group. And again, also that needs to be interrogated. But wh what did you promise? If we are to juxtapose, let's say the 10-point program, juxtapose that against the situation today, it's a miss, Charles. Mm. It's, a, it's a totally different picture altogether. Yeah? You, you see people who were hell-bent on fighting corruption. We have mastered the art of stealing the other day, the IGG told us we lose nearly 10 trillion shillings. Then another time, the same office said 20 trillion shillings a year. Mm. They probably need to reconcile their figures. But we lose plenty of money on an annual basis, and it's deliberate. In some seven, he will not fight corruption, because corruption is a system that his system feeds on. So if you're to give them 
a score, you score them against what it is that they promised. They came saying, no, there's been a lot of brutality by those that have been in power. Just look at the situation today. Anyone that says, okay, I am coming for your seat, they'll throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink. We have so many people who were killed from the Asin Kaumaz in Arua. Hmm. And Mr. Museveni went on TV and said, yeah, these Bobby Wines were beaten very well. C can you imagine that? Hmm. We have people who were disappeared. They have been missing to date. Nabanja says, on record, we arrested some of them. They were trying to kill police officers and so on, and some of business as usual. We have people in jail. Some seven, he was talking about detention without trial. There's a young lady called Olivia Lutai, hmm. among several others. Three to four years being held, there's no trial kicking off, and it's okay. When you look at the economy, you see, they, they, they like to say in 1986, our GDP was this, and our GDP per capita, it is this today. You see, Charles, if I set off from here, and I'm headed to, where's your village, Charles? My village mm. is uh, in uh, Warasha County, mm. in Ruteta sub county. On average, how long does it take to get there on a good day? On a good day, good if you're driving so a decent car, driving normal speed, it should be yeah. about between four and four and a half hours. Four and f okay, there you are. Let's yeah. even say five. Mm. But can you imagine if five hours later, you are, let's say, at the Busoga roundabout, let's, Busoga. you're using mm. that route. Stuck in jump for two hours. You've actually moved, yeah? Mm. Ten hours later, you're in PG. There is no, progress. In PG, you're going to Mbarara. So ten hours later, I'm in Metiana. I'll yeah. be taking you around. Mm. So the, the point I'm making, though, is, yes, there has been some progress, but what kind, vis-a-vis -vis what should be? There, there, there are countries who, in the 1960s, and this is a story many people tell, you know, who are at the same level. But today, it's a different story altogether. And Charles... Whether we like it or not, it's a governance question. But it, it, it's a governance question, I hear you. Is that unique to this country called Uganda? If you look across the African continent, you'll find that most countries find themselves in the same situation. Uh, whether you compare Kenya, for example, with uh, Malaysia, or you compare Tanzania with Singapore, you'll find about the same average then and now. So would you say that has been a unique challenge to this country called Uganda? Maybe we have the same challenge because also we should not be excited that at least we are not the only ones in this WhatsApp group. That, that should it excite you that you're, you're not alone among the failures. You have company. Um, I don't know if that is okay. Mm. But Seven has used the uh, comparison that uh, fighting to be the tallest among midgets. Yeah, and yeah. for us, we are not even trying in my view. But mm. what I was saying really is it's a governance question, whether we like it or not, yeah? Because everything rises and falls on leadership. Whether it be economics, it will fail once our governance issues are not sorted out. Whether it be the democracy we have and puff about, it will fail for as long as our governance issues are not fixed. Okay. So anything and everything will be tethered to that. And until we fix that issue, you see Mr. Museveni tried to diagnose that problem. He said the problem of African leaders the problem of Africa is leaders who overstay mm. and don't want to leave. Of course, now he tries to amend it to say who overstay without being voted into power. And again, we can discuss what kind of election it gets to be. But finally, Charles, when you to look at all of that, I think that the other bigger challenge, the quandary that we have with us on our hands is you have a regime that is hell-bent on keeping power against all odds. Focus will not be on anything else. It will be on how do I keep my power. We have been discussing the budget process. You see how the allocations are happening. It is not how do I improve the livelihood of the people. Mm. No, how do I keep the seat? So there will be heavy investment there. This child is making so much noise. Let's, I don't know, give him some money or I don't know what. They, they will not try and fix the issues this person is talking about. So our preoccupation, our revolutionary leader's preoccupation is keeping power, everything else will suffer. Oh, oh, let me come to you. I, I mean, you're the, the closest to the historicals of the NRM on the show. And uh, you, you've been spokesperson for, for a long time from your days at the NRM Secretariat uh, uh, at the Development House? Director of, Communication. Director of Communication to today. Many people will ask the question and say, it, you, it doesn't actually help 38 years down the road to look at where we came from because there is enough to interrogate 
within that 38 years. And, and, and the question that uh, Joel raises here, should we be looking at where we are or where we ought to be? Thank you, Charles. Um, not just nearest to the historicals of NRM, I'm also, also the oldest in this, on this panel. Yes. <laughs> Respectfully so. I am, I, I am uh, four score plus. You know four score? You know, you could educate me. A score is 15. So if you are four score, you are 60 plus. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> yes, in, okay. in our old mathematics. Mm. <laughs> so, so the, and also the first John is on this panel. Mm. I, I, I was your news, news source, same with you, <laughs> this man, this one, a literal. Mm. Yes, because we, he, we, we are journalists he, together. No, but you came from, from Makere well after the. Had been had in the newsroom had longer. Been in the yeah. newsroom. Mm. But now, yeah. good enough, I have lived in all the independent governments. I lived in Obote one, I lived in Idamin, you know, I lived in the, the, tra two. the transition mm. of UNLA, the, the three presidents. Mm. I lived in the Tito Kedo, Obote two, as an adult. Yes, we should continue to compare our journey, irrespective of the duration we have spent in the government. First, we need to congratulate ourselves as Ugandans, NRM and this leadership, for maintaining consistent leadership, steady st leadership, which had never been mm. in this country and across Africa. About the economic situation, as you had pointed out, is not unique to Uganda. Look at the countries of Africa that has never, that have never had even a bullet fired at a president. Look at Malawi, look at Zambia, look at Tanzania, look at Kenya, and many others in West Africa. Senegal, are they markedly different? in terms of socioeconomic transformation. Whichever indices you pick, literacy, infant mortality, maternal mortality, GDP, are they different? They are not. In fact, many of them, even in our own region that have not had, Uganda is a little bit better than those that have never had a government broken. The fact that a, a government can be broken when it's supposed to protect its people, and a government that cannot protect itself, and now you have a government that can protect itself, retained power, especially retained power through elections. We can discuss the quality of elections if people want, mm. but at least we have protected power in the main through elections. Election of the president, members of parliament and other lower leaders. So in that sense, Uganda is, is very good and we should continue to compare. And are we the only ones who compare our journey from where we started the journey from? No, we are not the only ones. Look at the old book, the Bible. When was the Bible written? More than 2,000 years ago. Mm. All the Ten Commandments, God all-powerful who created us, has he been able to ensure that the human beings he creates in his own image obey all the Ten Commandments? Why would we then expect that a government of human beings will make people comply? I, I think the, the, the difference the, between the Bible and uh, no, the example you're giving no. is that the Ten Commandments of God yes. were for the people he created. The Ten Point Program of the NRM was a program for the people of the NRM no. and the promise to Ugandans. No. Mm. There is a promise I, 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 and a I, I, commandment. I will, I will come to the Ten Point Program mm. and the socioeconomic transformation that we are going through the journey we've made. Now, are we the only ones Look at countries that have gone 
much older than ourselves in nation building. Look at America. Why is it that Americans, even today, still talk about the events of 1776? Why are the French talking about the French Revolution and what the French society was before that? Why is the world still talking about Hitler and the vestiges of Hitler to map, up, to map out where they are and where they need to go? If we have that discourse, I think we shall have a more objective assessment. Now, what the NRM promised, let us just reel through the 10-point program. Point mm. number one, restoration of democracy. And what does democracy mean? Mm. Democracy at home of a child being respected, being treated well. Of the marginalized people mm. previously, women, I grew up at a time, mm. I have said this, this on this show before, I don't have a girl I studied with in primary school who transited with me. I sat with in P7, who transited with me to secondary school. In that Moranda Primary School, you can go and check Moranda Primary School. Mm. It's only 17 kilometers from Toro Town. None. When I went to school, to secondary school, I was in a, a mixed school. We had about 100 students, so we sat senior six. Only two, only two girls. Mm. We came with us to university. One, Elizabeth Karimbe from Mayugedea, she did the forestry, and another one, Sarah Namadiba, she's in, in, she's in UNEB, only two. When we're in our class of political science, 1986, with the, the Nachovis, you can go and ask them how many girls were in that class. Mm. Democracy in the community. You know very well, my father was a, a county chief, Sasa chief, mm. for 27 years. I never saw my father stopping by the butchery to buy meat. The smaller chiefs would bring all the meat and the chicken. Why? Because the chief tenancy of that time was such that the chief must eat free things. The chief must eat free things. Democracy in the schools. I grew up when being a kid, what we now call corporal punishment, was the standard. Mm. I grew up in this town when you only have one or two newspapers, one radio station, three main religious groups. So in terms of civil society institutions, as part of the democracy infrastructure, you cannot say the NRM has not delivered. When the NRM came, first of all, we had had from 1980, we had had situations where when you're about to have elections, a government is broken. Since that time, 38 years, we have had how many cycles of election? I think nine. Mm -hmm. by universal adult suffrage. NRM has, was, is the first one to introduce universal adult suffrage In at all levels. Yes. But NRM would also be accused of being the one that actually always wins those elections. No. Mm. You cannot accuse NRM and try to make us guilty for winning election. However, I admit that, I, 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 however, I admit that those, some of those elections have not been perfect. Okay. But it has been work in progress. Let I just want to mention two more points. Point number five. Building a national economy that is self-sustaining, that is integrated. Mm. We have one? When, when, yes, to a large extent today. <laughs> to, yes, to a large extent today. When, 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 when NRM came here, do you know that Posho was being smuggled from Kenya? Posho, mm. Posho. Do you know that there was no millet, millet and beans in the shops as a tradable commodity? Today, if you go to any shop, mm. whether in the village or in town, between 
50 and 60 percent, you'll find that they are, they are having Ugandan made merchandise or products. Point number 10. Point number seven. Point number ten. Point number. Uh, no, I can, can uh, Point number, number seven. Point number you, seven. You said you wanted to add to uh, it. Point number seven. Corruption and abuse of office. Mm. Yes, there's still corruption. There's abuse of office. Mm. But can you do it with impunity, like my father did? Mm. That the chief. That yeah. that, that, that the, the chief doesn't have to buy a chicken. The smaller chiefs have to go to the villagers and bring for him a chicken from the church. Mm. As a matter of right. Yes, there are people stealing public money. There are people diverting, there are people abusing office, but you cannot do so without fear of the consequences if you consequences are caught. Consequences caught. if you are caught. Okay, if you think if you think stealing government money is easy, you steal and you see the consequences. But many are stealing. Oh, oh. No, 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 you 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 cannot make a blanket statement that men are stealing and nothing is happening to them. Where is Kazinda? <laughs> where's the where's permanent secretary Kashaka? Where are many others? Go to Rizira, go to the courts of law. If you think stealing public money is easy and you can get away with it, you also try steal and get away with it. Finally, point number 10, I think, about regional cooperation. Mm. Uganda was a paria. Uganda was exporting refugees, even to Mr. DRC Congo. Uganda was exporting refugees to Mr. Sudan. Uganda was exporting refugees to Mr. Kenya. Today, are we still exporting the same number of refugees? And are we support, uh, exporting refugees who are having the same problems like those who are there? Or are we, we exporting uh, house girls? Are we, yes. But you see, you are the same people who are saying the world is a global village. If that is the product you have to export, because nobody is forcing these girls to go. Mm. And, is, you, uh, and is, is Uganda, um, is Uganda you, the is, no? Oh, 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 is Uganda the only country? To, to, to go to, to Philippines. Two quick ones. Yes. Two quick ones. I want to put to you. One is you talked a lot about the number of girls who yes. are now in school. Yes. Today, the Minister for Education yes. released the results yes. from UNEB yes. of uh, PLE SAT last year. Yes. No, you journalists make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Results are released by your neighbor and received by the minister. By the minister. And well, to the, to the nation, yeah, yeah. they are released by the... No, the, she was yes. also pretending. You don't no, she wasn't. The, the, she was the, receiving the, results. She receives and then... N uh, okay, that, 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 that's a small a, point. Arose but by, arose by any name. It's still so arose. Good. Okay, now, you're so talking the, about the, the those numbers. That's what you're talking about today. We've been talking a lot about UPE. Yes. Universal primary education. Yes. We enter two million children. Uh -huh. In primary one, yes. those who sat P7 yes. last year yes. were 776,000. Yes. Yes. You cannot account for 1 million, point two, well, point two five children. Well, you, you where can, are they? If you, want, if you want to be positive, negative, you can say the glass is half empty. If I want to be positive, I will say the glass is half full. The, 20 years ago. That's actually a uh, quarter no, full. Mm. 20 years ago. How many children were actually entering school? Yes, I agree with you. We, we entered 2 million. Seven years later, we have 760,000, 776,000 completing. 20 years ago, were we completing that number? The girls we are talking about in today's result, UPE, out of the, out of the, out of the, the, the 750, 60,000 children who sat, mm. You can go and check. 556 are from UPE schools. Mm -hmm. You can go and check. 52% of the children who, who sat P7 are girls. Only 48 are boys. I want to believe, and they, they actually gave the performance over the last three, four years. Mm. There has been an upward trend of children completing primary living. Now, we can go back, those of us who are positive, who are saying the glass is half full. Mm. We can go back and say, what is making these children fall out of school? Mm. Is it parentage? Is it school? Is it the general malaise in the economy, in the country? And then we can tackle one by one. Okay. 
Are we the only ones? Another small one. You, 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 no, you, you, you can go to you can go to the Amer you can go to America by the way. You can go to the United States. Public schools, public schools, and private schools and private education. The situation is similar, similar in the sense that not everybody who enters school actually okay. completes. Mm. Now, we need to deal with, if somebody doesn't complete primary seven, does this economy have space for them by way of skilling? That's the bigger question. But le 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 let me just put another small one before I come to Honorable Semoju. Uh, the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs yes. gave an interview to NTV and said uh, people who go hungry are idiots. Maybe, maybe he used a thick brush to paint. No, no, mm. said they should be Yeah, but I, I know, but I, I, think, I think what he simply meant, mm. what he simply meant, and what the President Seven said many years ago, he said Uganda is such a fortunate country that you can throw a bean seed. You can thr throw. W wasn't peas. he? Wasn't no, he? Was no, you can throw a bean seed. Is, and without is, taking isn't care that minister, of it. Isn't that minister actually living on some cloud no, no, somewhere? No, 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 no. Lost think, to think, reality I, of Uganda. I think he's simply saying there is excessive laxity and carelessness. Mm. That if 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 you if you look at the average Ugandan family today or home, they actually produce enough food, but there's a lot of wastage. Mm. Uh, There's I, a lot of wasting. You, you, we, have, we have rain, you, like you, the rain you, this, you, like you rain this government morning. communication. You've seen the comments people have given, and someone no, said... No, so, so, you, 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 Ugandans on the media, particularly on social media, they will criticize you, even when you say the right thing. You know in Uganda... We no, want, no, some people no, are saying... Part of our problem... Some by, people are saying no, 38 part of, part of, years no, down part, the road. Part, part of our problem as Ugandans yes. is what the Americans call they say, polit political correctness. They, they're saying we, we're not 38 the, we're not years the, down the road. We're not the disease, but we don't want to tell the people that we are being wasted. Some Ugandans are saying 38 years down the road, some yes. leaders in the NRM have completely no. lost touch no, but, with but, the reality but, of but, ground but, but, and but, what but, Ugandans but, are going through. Honorable Kellerim mm. is one out of a million leaders of NRM. So are you going? Are you saying what Honorable Kellerim said? Well, if you, if he is, if he was what he said, is it the main axis of the NRM narrative about people who are not having enough food? Is Honorable it, Samuel Junganda, pick it up. Let, let me have Honorable Samuel Junganda pick it up. Statement. Yes, let me have Honorable Samuel Junganda pick it up. Your own um, score of the NRM and President Museveni after 38 years. I think the pillars of NRM, people who went to the world to fight, have all judged themselves at one time or another. The Honorable John Kazora left Makere, I think, at 21, 22. He told me when the graduation took place, they were in the jungles of Ruel. At that time, Radio Uganda was the only one. So he followed the graduation on Radio Uganda, and his name was Red. Mm -hmm. His book is called Betrayed by My Reader. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Sam Njuba, the late, he was in meetings preparing for the NRM to begin fighting. And then Seven went to attack Kababa with certain group. He actually abandoned his family and went to Nairobi. He was part of the Chirunda Chive Jinja, Mathur Kikaire, Amama Mbabazi, and others. His book, is the betrayal. <clears throat> there are others who haven't written. Uh, Dr. West, I don't think, has written a book. Major General Mugisha Muntu hasn't written a book. <coughs> he also went to uh, the university with Tumukunda. I think they went different days. They are meant to have gone together. The Honorable Manya Mushega, the late Honorable Elia Kategaya. So all the NRM people, people who founded the NRM, 
think there is a very big mm. problem. This NRM diverted from the path. If you read Mr. Museveni's book, by the time they took power here, oh, which one? The master the master said. Mm. The the formation of NRA as a group, I think, was a first battalion, third, fifth, seven, and I think nine. Then later they, they, they formed the third of which was being commanded by Lieutenant General, the one who recently retired. Go and look at all those people who commanded from um, Chihanda to Mande to Kashaka, whose deputy was Kashiring, who died a pupa. He couldn't even find um, 20,000 to buy medicine. Um, he, he has family who is watching and they should have been able to provide for that. They, they, they are in position to but provide. He was, he, he, I mean, until he got sick, I interacted with him. He wanted to continue working. So I don't want to be the judge of NRM mm. because I would be biased. I am telling you people who went to fight in the world with seven have judged him, they have judged themselves, they are all disappointed. Because on the major... <coughs> On, 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 the, on the major reason, Museven never went to Uero because Uganda's economy was doing very bad. Mm. That's not the reason. And I don't know why even Ofono Pondo is wasting his time. It is not the economy that took Museven to Uero. Museven went to fight in Uero because primarily elections had been cheated. And that's why his first book, what is Africa's problem? The owner of uh, Joel Sonyonya has referred to mm. has nothing to do with the economy. He went to fight because elections in Uganda had been cheated. Judge seven is elections. He cheats elections more or less the same way people who went to fight uh, were cheating elections. He shoots and kills people during elections. And he has said many times, how can I be removed by just a mere paper? Haven't you heard him say so? I, I was looking at his speech here. We will pick a few things from it yes. uh, today. The, the speech marking 38 years. And, and I know many of our viewers watched the, the, the speech uh, here on NBS. Just, just continue. Yes. So the, on, on the major issue for which the NRM was launched, I think it even gets zero if you want me to score him, he's behaving the same way, still disappearing, people are still shooting, young people for opposing him, he behaves more or less like all the others behaved, in fact, worse than Obote. The NRA, I even told the um, certain minister who was in parliament this afternoon to read a statement about the NRM day. And I said, this NRA is supposed to be illegal. The 1995 constitution created UPDF. The idea was that the country must migrate from gorillas of Uruwero, create national institutions, and the pride should be national institutions, not in a, a military outfit that went and shot and killed a half a million people and captured power. That's why those who made the constitution said, please, thank you very much, but we need to move from this point okay. to this. But the NRA, look at the amount of investment we have made. The last time when you were speaking about military, I told you go back to 2002 when we, with the, some funding from the British, we set out to professionalize the army, make it a national army, build very strong institutions because human beings are going to, whether you like it or not, seven will go. You, you are saying we should celebrate because he has been in power for 38 years. He can even be 40. Gaddafi was 43. Mm. After 43, he left and see what happened to a country. Because he tampered with the foundation, he did not build a foundation. He was just building himself. What Museveni has done for the last 38 years is to build himself and his family. That's why even uh, people of intellect now, they, they don't see beyond Museveni and beyond his family. They don't see anything. You, you can meet people who you think are sensible. They are saying now, stand by a generator. They think that it is a right. Ufono Pond was speaking about his father, who was a chief. Over smaller things that his father thought, thought that it was a right to receive a 
tomato and, and cassava. These guys he think it is, chicken it, and meat. These guys think it is the right for value. them to be leaders. Today in Parliament, we are discussing the Minister of Education. The last time she was seen was on the day she was being vetted by Parliament. And they said she can't come because there are, there are COVID issues. For her to come to Parliament, all MPs will be checked because she, she is the wife of the President. I asked Mr. Seven when you're on radio, I, I, I can put up with your father who was getting free chicken. These guys are stealing land. They are stealing government factories. They are stealing uh, stock farms. At least I would put up with your father of chicken and tomato. You can't plead for this Ofono Pondo. People who think that now my son, just because he's my son, he must have a convoy. That I said, really? Seven son has a convoy, including a toilet at his age. At least his father is old. But they think is they it, own. Does he, have, does he have the convoy because he's Museveni son or because he's a general in the military? Is he the only general you know? And the other generals with the convoys? You mean, you mean, is, is, is he the only general with a convoy? He's the only one I know. Tell me another one who has a convoy. We'll, we'll, discuss, that. we'll discuss that after a very short break. So commercial. therefore for me... I, yes, let, 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 let me pick it up with you after a very short break. And I just want to highlight some of the issues the president spoke about in his own uh, audit accountability of 38 years. He talks about security for all the people in Uganda human capital development, he talks about industrialization, he talked about uh, sustainable energy development, he talked about um, building a knowledge-based economy, he talked about oil and gas development, he talked about implementation of the parish development model, he talked about jobs creation, and he has the numbers, uh, he talks about inflows of foreign direct investment, remittances, he talks about um, increasing tourism revenue, and he talks about regional integration and development. He also talked about um, uh, trade flows within the East Africa, ESC region, and the rest of the world. And uh, I think the last one he talked about, uh, I'll just pick that one up as we take a break. Uh, yes, external trade, changes in the prices of goods and services, uh, which is inflation. And uh, he talked about... Um, Yes, expansion in economic activities. That's where he starts his uh, discussion from, uh, pointing out what his achievements have been over the last 38 years. When we come back, we'll uh, let uh, Semuju conclude his point, and then we go to Ambassador Adonia Ayabare. We'll be right back. from life.